today we will be talking about service above self. Specifically, we will have a lively, interactive and sharing discussion about how a small health-oriented nonprofit organization teamed up with an international service organization to create a self-sustaining charity operation in several Southeast Asian countries. I'm Terry and I'm your host and moderator for this discussion. Now I've been on two of those missions to Vietnam but like many of you I'm here to learn more and to tell you all about that success story I have two of the special people who were the main visionaries of the success stories. We have Walter Hazel, a longtime Rotary International member here in Calgary, and we also have Laverne Visky, CEO and founder of the charity No Ordinary Journey Foundation, also based here in Calgary. Welcome to you both. Thank you so much for sitting down with, with all of us for this next hour or so to tell us about this success story that, that, that happened. Thank you, Terry. That's right. Glad to be here. To start with, why don't you tell uh, everyone, um, Walter, what is Rotary International? <clears throat> Rotary International started uh, in uh, 1905 by a man by the name of Paul Harris in Chicago. He was a wealthy businessman and he would invite some of his colleagues to go out for lunch and then they started the policy of rotating who would sponsor the next lunch and they rotated around and that's where the term rotary comes from mm. because they rotated I for their see. various meetings. Okay. Well these were all wealthy people back in 1905 it was trying times and they decided they would do some good as well as getting together and enjoy things, enjoy each other's company and they would sponsor projects to help people that needed help financial assistance of one kind or another, and that's where the idea of service above self comes about. Okay. Which is, today, is still Rotary's model. The Rotary Foundation is based in Evanston, Illinois, and it assembles funds from around the world to match funds that local clubs use to do projects around the world. So now tell us a bit about Walter and Rotary. How did, how did Walter Hazel connect up with Rotary? I made a lot of contacts in Alberta, in Calgary, and I was offered a job heading up the research program at the Canadian Energy Research Institute, or CIRI, in which I took that job on. That led to consulting, and I consulted the rest of my working career. I consulted the oil and gas industry. 92. I was asked to join Rotary, which I did. I served on the board for a number of years. Rotary, Rotary Club of Calgary, which is, a, which is a big club. I served on the board for a number of years, and uh, uh, that led to uh, my involvement in all kinds of international projects with Rotary. Nice. Now, Laverne, tell us a little bit about your charity, No Ordinary Journey Foundation. So, No Ordinary Journey Foundation is a registered Canadian charity and we are involved with training around the disability of cerebral palsy. And so, all of our, uh, we'll call them missions or trips, it's not in any way a religious organization, involve professionals with experience working with children who have cerebral palsy. Um, taking those professionals to the countries in Southeast Asia and training the professionals that work with children who have cerebral palsy in those countries and it started in Vietnam but it's expanding from there. Good. You said it started in Vietnam. Yes. So um, I have a child who has cerebral palsy and although I say she's, a, she's my child, she is an adult. She's okay. almost 25. And um, many years ago, my husband and I decided that we wanted to travel with our children in Southeast Asia, and we did a four-month trip. And you know, at that time, we were really naive. Like, I, I knew that children living with cerebral palsy in Southeast Asia 
um, especially in Vietnam, would not have expensive wheelchairs like our daughter had and, mm. and maybe the ability to travel abroad and those kind of things. But I also didn't understand the conditions that they would live under and the fact that they would be very isolated and they would be stigmatized. And not only would they not have um, a wheelchair, but they wouldn't have really any kind of equipment support. So we, we actually witnessed children lying in their beds all day. And most, I guess what tugged at my heart the most was that we saw many, many children with disabilities like my own daughter that were being abandoned at orphanages. Mm -hmm. And not because they didn't have parents, but because the parents couldn't manage these children at home. So NOJF grew out of the idea that what these parents needed is supports and that it really didn't make a lot of sense for us to just come and work with a small group of parents and then go home. Sure. It made a lot more sense for us to come with a group of professionals and train the therapists, doctors, nurses, and other people who are already within the community okay. and train them on how to work with the parents and the children to hopefully avoid these parents feeling that they had to abandon their children at orphanages. Okay, good. Mm -hmm. Now we have No Ordinary Journey Foundation on one side and we have Rotary International. So how did that, how did that initial meeting start? Well, I, I think in the very beginning, I'll just interject, I joined Rotary in 2010 and by that time, of course, Walter was really um, established in Rotary and you were training, uh, one of the great parts about Rotary is that it's an excellent opportunity to, to learn to be a leader mm -hmm. and there's lots of training opportunities um, within Rotary for people who are new members like I was. But Walter remembers the exact moment that we met, don't you? Yes, <laughs> yes. The, uh, when, when we were doing this training, the, we had a big group of people in an amphitheater, and Laverne was always sitting at the same spot in the front row. She never said a word <laughs> during the presentation. But after the session was over, I couldn't get any more than 10 feet away from the podium before she was on my tail asking me questions. Okay, good. <laughs> so that's how we first met. <laughs> after this training was done for a year and so forth, Laverne, sponsored by Rotary Club of Calgary North, took on a project in Southeast Asia. And at the end of that several months program, where she was in Southeast Asia, in Vietnam, uh, to uh, provide this training in, uh, to people with cerebral palsy and their caregivers, uh, she made a presentation at the Rotary District Conference. And Laverne is a good presenter. And at the end of her presentation, she got a standing ovation. A very impressive presentation. Good. A few minutes later, I see her sitting at a table all by herself. So I went over and joined her and I asked her, is Calgary North prepared to sponsor you on another round of this project, uh, this, 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 this area? And she said, no, they made it clear. It was a one-off. One off, that's it. And so I said, let's talk. <laughs> and that's how we got put together. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah. like that saying goes, never say never and ask the question. <laughs> and, and I think we've done what, about six projects together now? Oh, yeah, at least. At least, yeah. yeah. And uh, nice. our last project was one that we really, we actually moved to a different country because they had host clubs in that 
country, and we could do what's called a, <coughs> me, a global grant as opposed to a district grant. A global grant has much more generous funding arrangements through Rotary International. So we moved from Vietnam to Thailand to take advantage of that program. And we put together a very big project, the biggest one we've had, probably bigger than all the rest of them put together. Yes, exactly. <clears throat> and uh, it was a very successful project. And then COVID set in and everything came to a screeching halt, including some work Laverne and NLJF had ongoing and they had to abandon that and come back to Calgary. Mm -hmm. But in the meantime, the Rotary Club of Bangkok took it upon themselves. They saw the value of what was happening, and they took it upon themselves to initiate a global grant of their own. With the, the, Bangkok is in the southern part of Thailand, northern part of Thailand, it's a different district. They teamed up with the district in northern Thailand, and they got a sponsor from South Korea. Hmm. The Rotary Club in South Korea is sponsoring. They have approval from Rotary International to proceed with a major global grant doing treatment of cerebral palsy in northern Vietnam and northern Thailand. So a number of these a number of these projects have been already done successfully. NOJ has run very efficiently, and most of those funds got to the people on the ground in Vietnam. So uh, kudos to you, Laverne, for, for doing that. And we're not talking a lot of money here, and I like to think of it as seed money, that initial mm -hmm. uh, boost off the ground to, to get uh, going. Is you get their buy-in right from the start with their volunteers, with their, uh, their connections, with the health ministry in those countries? Yeah, and I think in terms of Rotary, um, they they hold very strong the principle of sustainability and yes. so we I think we were already coming in with that attitude that this okay. needs to be sustainable we're not just going to drop in do a little thing and then leave leave and then it but Rotary for a long time has really focused on sustainable projects absolutely. right absolutely yeah. yes yes and what's the background to that like why is why is it sustainability so important to Rotary? Well, if you do a project that's sustainable, then it lasts. If you simply go in and say, oh, well, we'll serve, serve some meals here and then take off, where do you, what do you have? It collapses. You've had it's a bit of a project right there, but there's no nothing carry on. Yeah. So sustainability is really built right into all of these major projects. That's one of the, if you're doing the, re, having the review done by Rotary International, there are always questions about sustainability. Mm. It's yeah. very much more focused. Very good. And I think that that's why our organization and Rotary work so well together. In, in addition to the fact that Walter and I have a, a very deep respect for one another's work, I think we were both very much, were, uh, very much focused on sustainability and by its very nature, anything that you're doing with education, um, you know, once you educate somebody, you can't take that away from them. And so that became a focal point of what NOJF is doing. When people ask me to sort of summarize what NOJF is doing, I always say that what, what we're attempting to do is to bring hope and dignity to children who have cerebral palsy living in Southeast Asia. But underneath that, we actually use many different approaches. So, um, you know, sometimes it is wheelchair projects and we're delivering wheelchairs. Um, sometimes it's training, sometimes it's conferences. But underneath all of that, there is an education component because education is by its nature um, sustainable. Mm -hmm. Okay. I, I, I want to emphasize that with the point you are making about training the people and educating them, that's the thing that will keep the thing going. Yes. And that will spill off onto other yes. families that haven't been involved. Yes, and exactly. And they'll say, oh, well, i got to get a wheelchair for my kid. Yeah. You know? Yes. It, it, yes. it takes, on, takes on its own life. And from, from what I saw in the <clears> two <throat> missions I was on, 
It's not just the parents and those children that were attending these workshops. It was actually a large part where their local professionals, the therapists, uh, the doctors, the nurses yes. from Vietnam, and there was also segments that was just training for them in PowerPoint yes. and training the professionals. So the professionals were there in parallel with the parents of those children with CP and the CP children. And so, you know, we sort of took a, a page out of the Rotary playbook because our thinking was if you train one parent how to work with one child, that benefits that parent and benefits that child. But if you train one physiotherapist or one doctor or one nurse... Or one organization like Canto. Yes. We went down into Canto with, yeah. where they had a hospital and they invited us to come in and provide them with the training that they can take forward and apply. Nice, mm -hmm. nice. But then each of those professionals um, not only impacts <clears throat> all of the parents and the families that they work with, but now what we're seeing, which I think is Walter's point, is that you've got those professionals in organizations like the Canto Hospital, and they are beginning to train each other. And at the very, very least, they are changing attitudes. And when people's attitudes mm. change mm. Um, towards, for example, um, to, to really value children with disabilities and their families, that that's contagious and and once you change those attitudes then they will seek out other resources so we've had incidents where people have attended some of our training and then they will say well can you provide more documentation afterwards like we want to supplement our teaching and we want to share it with our colleagues so i, th I think that's the basis of sustainability it is isn't it? Yeah, it's is when you can see it rippling <laughs> out right and, and the word has gotten out and we get approached by organizations we didn't even know about. Really? For example, the Australians approached us yes. for buying new wheelchairs. Yes. I mean, that's, that's a Rotary operation again. Rotary in Australia heard about what we were doing and they said, can we get involved and provide wheelchairs? Yes. And we said yes. Yeah. Okay. Why not? <laughs> and that was about 600 wheelchairs they were donating yeah. to Vietnam? Yeah. Yes. And so I, I think that Walter's first point is really, really important um, in terms of how do you make these projects successful. One of the key things is the synergies of working together. So in this wheelchair project, which we just did last September and was our very first wheelchair project, the sustainability piece was, first of all, that um, we were training the professionals on how to provide these wheelchairs to children with cerebral palsy. In Vietnam? Yes, in Vietnam. Because because kids with CP, they're, they're, oftentimes their whole posture and movement is affected. You can't just take a wheelchair and put a kid with CP in it and send them home and hope for the best. Those wheelchairs have to be specifically fitted to that child so that you don't create more problems in terms of things like scoliosis or even just in terms of safety, like sure. the child falling out of the wheelchair. So the people on the ground have to be trained on how to specifically fit that wheelchair to the child. Of course, they're children, so they're growing. So someone needs to monitor it and, and to keep that, keep that going. So that was the first piece about the sustainability is that, um, you know, that making sure that that training was happening and that's NOJF's piece. Sure. And then the Australian piece where they come in is with their synergies because they donate the wheelchairs, but they're only going to donate them to countries where there are trained professionals to fit them okay. and to monitor them and um, sure. you know to make sure that that everything's sort of going going forward. Sure. Mm -hmm. So those professionals in Vietnam were trained at how to uh, initially set up and maintain those wheelchairs so they could keep that going yeah. uh, year after year on their own. Yeah, exactly. And, and not, only, not only maintain the wheelchairs that the kids already have, 
but additional wheelchairs can can come and they can distribute them and again they're training their colleagues as well they're yeah. going to be training their colleagues sure on how to do so that, that project finished most recently and now we're in the midst of covid which kind of froze everything so are there any projects pending that still have to be completed maybe once the, the, the wheelchair project isn't complete yet, is it? No, it isn't. Okay. We were supposed to go and do um, a follow-up with the wheelchair project, and we're also hoping to bring additional projects. But COVID is really kind of, um, you know, putting a halt to that. And we're really thinking about ways that we can go forward, you know, using using electronic media. But unfortunately with cerebral palsy, because this is something that we've been thinking about for a long time, how can we deliver information without a team of people actually having to go there and be there? And COVID is causing us to think about that a little bit more. But the problem is that the work that we're doing is very, very hands-on and it's really, really difficult mm -hmm. to... Uh, explain that over yeah, Zoom. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's... How, how can you explain over... A zoom camera or, or video or whatever is how to adjust a wheelchair to each individual yeah, child's requirements it's impossible tough. you can't yeah. do it you have to be there in person you yeah exactly be there, yeah. because the the real issue is that every child is different and yes. it's very very difficult to actually assess a child if you can't touch them and you can't ask for them to be positioned in a certain way. Mm. And, and show the parents what they need to do. Yes. To get their kids sitting in there comfortably. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, exactly. It's not something you could explain over the phone. You might be able to deliver the initial, the, the uh, holistic, the higher level over a, a video yeah. screen. Learn much faster by doing. And it's not only that type of learning, but it's sort of the social learning as well. Because as I said before, really our, whether it's wheelchairs or conferences or <coughs> therapy training, our goal is really to change attitudes. And what we find is the best way to do that is having these therapists together, having a discussion about the way the situation is now and um, having, having them interact mm. and having them actually work with the children and the families okay. is a huge, huge thing. Because our whole goal is stewardship for them. We, we don't want to have to be the driving force for every project, which is what Walter's talking about when he's talking about sustainability and what has happened when the people in Thailand, the Rotarians, realize the value of what we're doing and then they're moving it forward in a sustainable way. Sure. What they've really done, the word that I would use is stewardship. They've taken ownership of it. Mm -hmm. They're now driving the bus. Good. We are no, we showed them where the key is, but Good. they're Good. the ones that are driving sure, the bus. That's and that's great. absolutely critical to sustainability. So that wheelchair project still is, has to have a follow-up mission, and I guess we're sort of waiting until COVID kind of yeah. flattens out a bit yeah. to get and somebody there in person. Yeah, so they the the trainees that we have went home to their, um, their cities and their hospitals, and they have the complete package of information um, to, to, they're actually fitting wheelchairs, they've been given some wheelchairs and they're fitting them. But the next part of the project was really to go on site and do a follow up and answer any questions. Because you know sometimes you do a training and then you go home and it's not as easy to figure yes. out how to implement <laughs> it in your own environment. Sure. But they, they have enough um, they have enough information and they had hands on information to be able to go home and do it. But just in the interest of being thorough, um, we we intend to go back and and visit every visit every site but we we always good. welcome them good, good. to contact us by email or by zoom or by whatever method and ask questions but sometimes the uh the language barrier is a bit daunting for them sure yeah. yeah yeah and i remember from one of the missions i was on there were a lot of professionals there president uh, present and taking part in fact you had one volunteer from vietnam who stepped forward and volunteered 
himself to pre-screen all of their volunteers yes. to make sure that they have probably uh, more than anything not just a desire to get a star on their car that yeah. they took part in this but they have an interest a commitment yes. to help out in taking it forward like taking ownership of it yeah uh, so that the training they learn they can now use to train others of theirs in their uh, respective university or to hospital yeah. or mm -hmm. clinic that they work at yes. so that's a big step no the other thing is that you can be very thorough in the training and do a really bang up job but it's still important to have a follow-up because there are things that fall through the crack mm. that, that need to be corrected yes, and true. adjusted and take it to the next step sure right? and this you know going back and paying another visit back there and checking up on things is very important sure because mm -hmm. the way we do things here we might not realize they can't quite do it the same way because of cultural differences uh, politics whatever so yeah. things have to be adjusted so that it works for them in their local countries mm -hmm. okay good so if we were to to wrap up if somebody wanted to start a, a self-sustaining uh, operation or mission or project to some country uh, like this. It sounds like Rotary already has at, at its core service above self and Laverne you mentioned energy as well had the very similar uh, still has at its core where you're not just there to help the parents and the children with CP but you're there big part component is to train their professionals that they take ownership of it right from and they know it mm -hmm. yeah. the other good thing about all of this is that rotary is around the world we have projects we have clubs in pretty well every civilized mm. country uh, around the world and you know these are all things you can piggyback on you can start from there and sure build up from there sure just with a little bit of seed money yeah. a small project and i uh. think um it, it, it that is true, but I think that part of where the synergies come from is, say, for example, Walter has experience from from being in Ghana and also much experience working with international rotary projects. So Walter and there are other Rotarians that our organization has relied on to guide us through some of the maybe okay. the political and logistical challenges that we okay. come up against. So That's great. I think that the, if, if, syner if um, sustainability is our goal, then synergy is one of the keys, key points that need to be addressed. And as many possible partners working together um, Good. moves us Synergy, to, like yeah. that word. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, the, the other thing is that you have Rotarians that get experience in a lot of different places. Yes. So I've had, I've had been involved in Rotary projects all over Latin America, mm -hmm. the United States, all over Africa, mm -hmm. Asia. And so they're all a little bit different. But every time you go into one of these countries, you learn something. Mm -hmm. And you can apply that somewhere sure. else. And, you know, this, this, this international... Rotary International is a phenomenal organization that was nice. Good. So I heard one word, synergy. Mm -hmm. I heard a second one, which the big one is sustainability. Mm -hmm. And you have a third. Stewardship. Yes. Stewardship. Yeah. So synergy, sustainability, mm -hmm. and stewardship. Mm -hmm. The whole picture that from the first day both of you met at a Rotary meeting and lessons learned about setting up these projects any kind of um, uh, feedback you can give because the whole purpose of us talking today is to try and encourage other chapters of rotary worldwide to also look at doing seed projects in conjunction with local rotary groups uh, in order to create a, a core project that eventually will be taken over at that local level and maintained and carried through there is <clears throat> Something else I have to throw out. Sure. This COVID issue is a major issue that is affecting all kinds of things, including rules set up by Rotary International. And uh, it is 
not going to be the same going forward. Okay. So you have to keep your eyes open and uh, roll with the punches. Sure. Synergy, sustainability, and stewardship. Postmortems, doing a uh, uh, an after. Uh, I know when when I was there, what I liked, we had the daily Debrief. uh, debriefs, yeah. which I absolutely loved because the when you're on a mission like that in in a Southeast Asian country, Vietnam, for example, the days are long. Rehab hospitals we were at were not air conditioned. Uh, we're talking like 90 plus degrees, near 100% humidity. And we still was, what was energizing was coming back because we all traveled as a group back to the hotel. Uh, and then in the, in the lounge or even in the front reception area, we would have a, a debrief, which was still energizing. So each person that was delivering the training of our team could, could share what they learned, what they saw, what surprised them. Because you always have preconceived visions of what you might see and, oh, it's going to be a routine day. And then uh, we, nothing was ever routine, was it? No. <laughs> so it's always nice to do these debriefs, and for the rest of the team to hear how it impacted each other, them as well, and that would help to shape our next uh, day's mission. And I think you've hit on something very, very important with regard to synergy, because it's not just the relationship that NOJF. Um, has had with Rotary and it's not just about the relationship that NOJF has had with the hospitals and the institutions that we've worked with but it's also the relationship that we have had with all sorts of professionals who decide to become volunteers on our missions yes. and the, the role that they play and the energy that they bring and the amount of education that they bring so that, that synergy really reaches um, to all kinds of people and needs to be supported by all kinds of people and in, in our cases it sort of filtered down the idea of sustainability from Rotary to us and then from us to the people who are uh, in the hospitals in Vietnam and even further to the people that we're training but also um, to the people that are coming as professional volunteers, they're thinking about that idea of what do we do and how do we train people so mm -hmm. that they will be able to continue doing this even after we've gone home. Sure. Well, thanks so much. This was uh, very insightful. The whole purpose here is, is to encourage other, other chapters of Rotary to consider uh, projects like this where uh, synergies can combine with local chapters of Rotary, for example, mm -hmm. uh, sustainability right from the start, get the uh, professionals that are taking part in those countries, get their buy-in right from the start, and also allow them to have a part of the planning as well, yes. because they will know what will work, and, and perhaps they yeah. could say, no, that isn't going to work here, or you're going to come up against barriers and you don't want to do that because that's just going to slow down the progress. So it's good to get their buy-in and the last is stewardship. And it sounds like, you know, from Rotary, serve above self, those three words, which are also S words, and the core of NOJ was already at service above self. So that partnership that NOJ and, and Rotary seed funding had from the start was probably a, a very good uh, start to a working relationship. Well, thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs>